Hello and welcome to another Star Citizen monthly report looking at what Cloud Imperium have been working on over the last few weeks in regards to the Persistent Universe and Star Citizen's core systems and some details of what they're currently working on now in September. A lot of work is focused towards Alpha 3.11, the Q3 next major update and associated features with that as well as expanding gameplay beyond that as well. They looked into cargo hauling as a profession. Work is being done to see it in a much broader sense with aspirations operations to expand the system to make it more interactive and exhilarating. The gameplay features team said, cargo haulers will ultimately need to monitor their cargo, checking to make sure it's stable and in good condition while they travel. Beginner haulers will need to check things like temperature while hauling food, whereas experienced haulers may need to check the stability of volatile shipments. We feel the new design will be a great update for the profession and look forward to seeing the reactions from citizens when it comes online. Now I'm really, really excited about those volatile cargoes they are basically just an expansion of the sort of mineables the quantanium but literally for cargo hauling and other missions it sort of makes sense so a new set of three volatile cargo assets has been kicked off so each of the three types requires unique visuals to reinforce their gameplay along with cargo cage assets to help embed them into their surroundings props also supported the push pull feature which will see us interact with cargo and larger objects in a much more sort of like uh, interesting way and actually be able to interact with those sort of items. They are also working on a new reputation system and soon we will have a reputation score that is tracked as missions or tasks are performed. The system will allow players to earn perks through reputation gains and that will tie into player perks. It will also add support for NPC organizations and their rankings previously referred to as guilds. Reputation won't roll back when they push a new build and wipe the databases in the same way that assets are supposed to be carried over to major patches where possible as well. So that suggests to me there's going to be a lot more potentials for progression in the game and I'm very much looking forward to that. Actually having those NPC guilds or, or um, organizations, whatever they're calling them now, that allow you to um, you know, be part of a bounty hunters guild that will give you perks, maybe um, show you where uh, people last work, give you access to their missions uh, sort of like set, like you can now do the bounty hunter missions or higher tiers of bounty hunter mission or you get access to different types of mission or different difficult of mission based on your reputations, stuff like that. More generally, they worked on some new missions and journal entries of 3.11, as well as plans for expanded mission content for future releases. Most visual teams have an embedded UI artist in them that makes sure all those features are working with the new building block systems. All we'll have the sort of like new UI layouts and are polished and working for that just straight off the bat. Uh, so artists have been polishing the personal inner thought system and external inventory, both of which are going to be used in the Persistent Universe and Squadron 42, obviously. Very very much looking forward to personal inventory whenever that actually drops being able to loot things as well that's going to be pretty good uh, hopefully that'll be in later this year we'll have to wait and see new concepts for the hollow deck were devised for the vehicle feature team while adverts and branding for cargo decks were created by the environment team the ui team has also created new designs for the reworked and improved star map while it shouldn't be expected anytime soon it's a piece of core functionality that is regularly used and it's going to be improved significantly it seems ship stuff they are completing the final art stages of the crusader merc Star Runner, with some areas heading into the final flight ready phase, including damage geometry. Additionally, detail is being applied to interior rooms and a functional dashboard is being created. This will include independent power control for various systems, weapons controls and more. Each system is planned to have built-in feedback to allow players to see the state of each system at a glance and identify if damage is preventing a system from working. I'm expecting those sort of um, updates to be put across all the ships at some point as well, um, based on obviously what type of um, HUD and MFDs and, and, and systems you have on your ship. The Crusader Hercules is also being built out with focus on habitation areas, taking them to the final art stage. The lift and cargo hold also seems to have made progress and the corridor connecting to the bridge was completed, including suit lockers, escape pods and several component bays. The Origin 100i series is now art complete and has been handed off to downstream teams, while the recent unveiled Esperia Talon is in the final art stage and receiving a detailed pass. Vehicles features have also been working on showing which 
hangar a player's ship is in after being spawned from the Aesop terminals. For a future release, they're also working on a feature to highlight a ship's available entrances as well. So ladders, doors, elevators, you should be able to see them much more easily at a glance if you own the ship. Although not yet added back onto the roadmap, work on docking continues. Various aspects of the UI were iterated on to adequately detailed docking processes and to give suitable guidance to a docking port regardless of its type or orientation. Different IFCS control modes were also being investigated to allow players to control a ship relative to a port to make docking easier. They also worked on headless client automated testing that enables restricted landing splines to be tested automatically as part of the flow. Now hopefully we'll see a good implementation of docking and automatic docking and anything that they, they have planned for that. Also the restricted area stuff I think needs to be heavily reworked or improved and that looks like what they're doing to some extent. We'll have to wait and see um, how that feature evolves though. Capital ship improvements have been made specifically the way gradual damage reads across the hull. Fire 2, so the propagation of actual fire. Maybe you have a big fire outbreak on your ship. Um, they've made improvements syncing that between client and server. Very much still in the sort of R&D and test phases. Further concepts were created for shields including the visual read of impacts to show the health of a shield and improvements were made to the quantum travel vfx environments pyro 6 is now at the white box complete stage they are currently placing ground textures objects and scattering logic using the paintbrush system once the brushes and biomes are finalized a final painting pass will be done to ensure meaningful distribution of assets pyro 5's moons have entered into production the environment art team said this is great timing for the team as it lets all the artists grab one moon and go crazy with the new tools. They have a clear idea of how to use the new tech, but it's also a good opportunity to see how the artists go about making a new planet from scratch and use slightly different workflows. One of the hopes for this tech is along with better visuals, new planets will be created much more quickly than previously possible. I think that's really good to hear because obviously we have been uh, waiting for a long time for Cloud Imperium to tool up uh, and get into a position where they can start more rapidly building out the verse. Obviously, they're still uh, building out different biomes and assets and uh, the tools as well still, uh, but they are very close to, you know, being in a state once they finish the pyro system, it looks like, to be able to much more rapidly build out those star systems and planets. With that in mind, Stanton's planets and moons are also being updated to the latest tech as well. Progress was made on Crusader with R&D underway into its flow maps to bring the gas giant to life. I am assuming that will have um, literally pockets and colors of gas moving around so you'll see like a more Jupiter-like. R&D into volumetric clouds continued and detailed plans for experiments and next steps were drafted. Work on the organic shader continued too, bringing tighter integration with planets to enable the artists to use assets in a variety of biomes and have them automatically integrate into their surroundings. Lighting added the final touches to the cargo deck facilities and exterior add-on modules for the, the associated cargo decks, uh, as well as ensuring they integrated with the stations visually. Work continued on cargo deck props with console and materials work completed for various heavy machinery. A pass was completed on larger cargo containers, adding more branding and creating less demanding background dressing for the environment team. The light team also began preliminary work on Orison, the landing zone at Crusader there. They're also now looking at some more sort of cinematic character face lighting, which will allow for much better lighting opportunities opportunities in the future. VFX have progressed with the refinery location effects, including improvements to the molten metal pouring from large containers in the background, which were in pre-production last month. Items and animations wise, Greybox continued work on automatic defense turrets and they looked into missile and uh, missile rack metrics, ensuring that props worked with all missile variants. The bearing BR2 shotgun is nearly complete. The GP33 grenade launcher received an additional pass to some of the rig and animation setup as well. Animations have been working on uh, object and grenade throwing, knockdowns and knockbacks, and several new weapons. So we're going to see force reactions, people being uh, blown around by grenades people being stunned. Uh, eventually when ships are hit um, you're going to stumble around if you are uh, not sitting down or in a proper station or jump seat. They also further developed AI interaction with seats and capital ships, the bartender, ship inspections and progressed with their work on NPC ammo retrieval. They also continued creating female player faces and emotes. Uh, the bearing MK4 
frag grenades have been updated to support the new throw feature and gained a visual indicator showing the cooking time before it's thrown. Actually really looking forward to some of the new items that they are building for 3.11, uh, assumedly for that throwing system. So you're going to be able to throw a lot of random items. I'm interested to see if they actually stun people, if you just chuck a pico at them uh, or whatever. Uh, but new items and, and armors are being worked on as well. Let's look a little bit more at some AI stuff. Social AI have been focused on looking at bartender functionality and then trying to get that functionality in multiple other vendors. This allows them to more quickly populate the world with initial version of interactive characters capable of selling different types of goods. Work on realistic firing continued for FPS AI, including the implementation of physical ammo boxes and ammo refill behaviors. They also added functionality to swap weapons so NPCs no longer need to execute the unequip equip actions to actually take another weapon out they can actually just switch this also empowers the animators to create smooth transitions when swapping weapons beyond this they are planning behaviors for more realistic fps combat such as how character skills and traits influence combat behaviors and how emergent synergy between characters can create a more realistic and flowing combat experience ship ai have been working out a accuracy system based on the skill of an AI character, the, the character in question, they're all going to have different um, sort of skills, I suppose. Um, although there might be archetypes where you get people that are trained or not trained, that sort of stuff. The skill determines how rapidly the gunner's aim moves to the location where a hit is more likely. Aiming error is a dynamic variable that changes depending on how fast the target moves relative to the shooter. For example, if a player is almost stationary, the AI will shoot more consistently, forcing players to perform defensive maneuvers. This system applies to all AI, including all varieties of turret and FPS combat. Furthermore, ship and turret AI can now use charged weapons correctly, providing their fire actions per minute, such as the Idris Railgun, which that'll be pretty exciting. Um, but that's a big old gun, and hopefully we'll see the Idris in the not too distant future back in game as part of an NPC mission. Backend and server stuff. So there was significant effort invested in building new backend architecture to facilitate higher player concurrency on game servers. So I believe that's just um, having more players generally on more server instances of 50. Um, rather than increasing the player cap on each of those, although I suppose it's all a step towards increased player caps. Changes and fixes were made to the wallet service as it was running hot under load with the entitlement process uh, updated to support the upcoming super cash. Most of the code for the super cash is finalized, though some reliability and optimization work uh, remains before it can be tested and tuned. A lot of low level network code was finalized, including network system startup and shutdown and a primary work on the meshed variable service began. This includes the use of direct connections rather than global routing through the diffusion router, which is currently in the test and tuning phase. Note that that's not peer-to-peer -peer communication there. Engineering, so work on the Gen 12 renderer continues as they convert all the old code and systems over to the new one. Clean up in the shader system and renderer for thread safety continued, as did Gen 12 brush rendering. They also started to look into DirectX 11.1 .1 API support uh, for Windows 8.1 and up for some more immediate improvements for performance until Vulcan ships. They have added support for sign distance fields for physics grids and other various integrations for sign distance fields uh, as well as GeForce calculation for all actor entities. They've made some optimizations to multi-threading. They have a new API crash handler for debugging. Uh, well, better be debugging I suppose. They are working on memory usage bugs, leaks and optimizations too, and work on Vulkan backend made good progress. There was a persistence issue which was recently resolved that resulted in 93,000 ships being returned to players' accounts, uh, which is very, very good. We lost a load of ships, um, which was really annoying. I'm glad they've solved that, or at least they appear to have. And that's it for the monthly report this time, though we will be taking a look at the Squadron 42 uh, monthly report shortly. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to the NBC orgs or guilds that you can join and reputation gains there? Do you think we will see the Vulcan integration stuff and the start of the Gen 12 renderer later this year? Or do you think it's much further out? What cargo missions and improvements do you think we'll see in Alpha 3.11 and 3.12? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What am I shilling for today, I hear you ask? 
Do you hate it when people steal all of your money and your house over the internet? I know I do. NordVPN may have been invented by wizards to help protect your personal data from the prying eyes of the dark web, a sinister cabal of technomancers that grow in power the more they know about your browsing habits. The true story of NordVPN's origins are unknown and lost to the ages, and without using facts, no one really knows how it provides more accessibility to otherwise censored websites or a safer security experience for all that use it. All I know is that it does, and that when you sign up to it, the power level of my bank account grows. And I use it, and maybe you should too. Every month we have a giveaway for a Star Citizen ship. For this month of September, it's for the Talon Light Fighter, the Battlebird Glass Cannon. Just comment on any of my videos made during September 2020 to be in for a chance of winning that. That ship should be flyable by the end of the year. If you'd like to further support the channel, there is Patreon or YouTube channel memberships via the join button down below. That will net you some exclusive content each month, but sharing videos, liking, subscribing, dinging the bell, as well as commenting and giving feedback really does help the channel to grow and give me an idea of what you guys want. Thanks very much for watching. You take care and I'll see you in the verse.